Yes, I know, there are already a lot of videos telling you what to do to succeed with your vocal recording. Like it's a recipe. I don't think there is such a recipe, because there are no rules. But there are, however, some tips and tricks you can use to achieve the sound you want. And what do you do if you don't have a good room to record vocals in? I will show you that also. Hi, my name is Roger and welcome. I work as a musician and I have my studio where I'm recording and mixing. And today we're going to talk about recording vocals. If you like these kind of videos, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe. That helps me a lot. Thank you. What tools do we need? Well, first, of course, we need a microphone. The most common microphones when recording vocals in a studio are large diaphragm condensers or dynamic microphones. There are other kinds of microphones like ribbon microphones and small diaphragm condensers. You can use those, but mainly we use dynamic or large diaphragm condensers and there's a reason for that. Dynamic microphone, you can go with like a Shure SM58 like this one, mainly used for live, but it could be used in the studio as well. Or a famous Sennheiser MD421, famous on guitar amplifiers, toms, but also a great vocal mic or a large diaphragm condenser, like this. What microphone to choose is a subject for another video. I won't go further into that in this video. For the examples you're gonna hear in this video, I've chosen this microphone. It's the Rode NT1000. It's sort of a lower mid-class microphone. It's not the cheapest. It's not an expensive high-end microphone either. I think the cost was about $300, $350, and I think that is in the range what most people have, so therefore I chose this one. We need a stand, something to hold the microphone. Don't go for the cheaper stand, they won't last, maybe they will be good for six months and then they will break. Also, if you spend money on a microphone, you don't want the microphone to fall. Go for a decent stand, it doesn't have to be the most expensive one, but it has to be okay. A tip is to check if you can buy spare parts, then it's probably a decent stand. We need a pop filter. What the pop filter is doing is to lower the amount of air that hits the membrane, especially when we are singing P, B, F, etc. When we are doing that, puffs of air hits the membrane and it's gonna cause trouble. The best kind of pop filter in my opinion looks like this. You place it on the stand, and you place this nylon fabric in front of the microphone and sing into it. This nylon fabric can be metal as well, but the nylon thing is better in my opinion. We could use a pop filter like this, mainly used outside maybe because it's lowering wind noise as well. What do we do if we don't have a pop filter? We can do the pen trick. I have two pens, I would choose a blue one for this. I have just taped the pen in front of the membrane of the microphone. That splits the air before it hits the membrane. It's not the best pop filter in the world, but it's much better than nothing. This could also reduce S sounds if you have a lot of S's in your microphone recording. And you can do it together with another pop filter. In the examples you're gonna hear, I've used this small and cheap pop filter that is very convenient, you just place it over the microphone like this. It's not in the way of anything. Why do we need a pop filter? Well, we can listen to these examples, first without the pop filter the and streets, then with. I walked two beats and sang along with my midi disc and I, I felt so free as one could be with my midi disc. Let's solo the vocal. First without the pop filter. As one could be. And now with it. As one could be. I recommend that we have somewhere to place the lyrics for the song we're about to sing. Even if you know the lyrics by heart, it's much more comfortable if you have the lyrics in front of you. The sheet music stand is good to have in every studio. A tip is to place it low, blow up the lyrics so they are big, and place the sheet music stand low so the reflections doesn't hit the microphone as much as it otherwise would. I recommend standing on a carpet when we are singing. It reduces a lot of the noise from the feet and the room and the reflections from the floor. I'm standing on a carpet right now. 
I have a few of these small carpets I bought from IKEA in my studio so I can record vocals or anything wherever I want. Do we need a shock mount for our microphone? A shock mount like this. You place the microphone inside and there are rubber bands that is flexible and reduces the noise from the stand into the microphone. Well, it's good to have, but I don't think it's necessary. If you have a carpet, if you have an isolated silent room, you don't need a shock mount. Some microphones benefit more from a shock mount than others, so it's better to try it yourself. We need some headphones, and I recommend closed back headphones for recording, like these Bay Dynamic DT250. I think they are excellent for recording, not for mixing, but for recording they are good. If you have open back or semi open back like these ones, you could have some leakage from the headphones into the microphone when recording. They sound good, so they are good for mixing, but not as good for recording. Links to a few microphone recommendations and also some things that I use will be in the description. They are affiliate links, so that means that I will get a small kickback. It's not going to be more expensive for you, but it will help me create these videos. Let's talk about distance to the microphone when recording vocals. Normally nowadays, I think people tend to go with very closed up recordings. It could be preferred sound, but it could also be that you don't have a controlled room sound wise to record in and we want to get rid of the room as much as possible. Therefore, we record vocals close up. I would say that the most natural sound from a large diaphragm condenser is about 40 centimeters away from the microphone. That also creates a little bit of compression because the sound will travel through some air before it hits the microphone and air is a very good compressor. I will show you three examples of three distances so you can choose what sound you like. One very close to the microphone and one about 25 centimeters away from the microphone, which is a very common distance in a studio. It's sort of a mix between close and natural. And then I will stand about a meter away from the microphone. On the streets, I walked to beats and sang along with my bleeding disc and I, I felt so free as one could be. My beatings on the streets. I walked to beats and sang along with my midi disc, and I, I felt so free as one could be. As you can hear, I've chosen the song from my songwriting series, a song about a mini disc. You can check it out if you want to. And also, if you want my songwriting guide for free, you sign up to the email list on my webpage. Link is in the description. As you can hear, the sound differs a lot between the different distances. Therefore, if we have loud parts in the vocal, don't go away from the microphone when the loud parts come. Turn your head away from the microphone instead and sing at the same distance from the microphone. That will make a more consistent sound throughout the song. I don't like vocal booths. I hate them. No, not hate them, but I don't like them. I don't like singing in them. I don't like performing in them. And when I get mixes where other people have recorded in a vocal booth, I find it hard to mix every time. I like to record my vocals in a controlled sound environment, of course, like this room is, but not in a very tight space like a vocal booth. What do we do if we don't have an acoustically controlled environment to record in? Let me show you. Let's see if we can record some vocals here. This is my hallway slash kitchen in my studio. This is not treated at all, as you can probably hear. So let's see how it sounds. On the streets, I walk to beats and sang along with my mini disc and I. I felt so free as one could be. Let's see if we can do something about this. I have some fabric. This is a thick fabric, mainly used as backdrops on stages. But you can use a dovet quilt, uh, bed cover, something like that. Just soft material. Mm -hmm. 
and I used my closet to hang it on. I will put the microphone in the direction towards the fabric because the microphone is pointing there. If I would sing, if I would sing into the fabric, the microphone will still pick up most of the room because the microphone is picking up the room. So into the fabric. I also have one of these. This is a rather expensive acoustic screen. You're supposed to have the microphone here and sing into the microphone. But the microphone is still pointing out in the room, so it, the microphone will still pick up a lot of the room. It will take away a little bit, little bit of the room, but not so much. That's why I don't use it so much for recording vocals. I use this when I have more musicians or more vocals in my studio to separate them from each other, to make it easier to mix. I had a saxophone player and a vocalist in the same room uh, and then I put this on the vocal. On the streets, I walked to beats and sang along with my mini disc and I, I felt so free as one could be with my mini disc. Maybe I should do a video about how to prepare as a singer in the studio and also if you are the producer, how you can prepare the singer and make it comfortable and make the singer perform his or her best. If there are tips and tricks that I've forgotten in this video, please leave them in the comments and thank you for watching. The microphone is on a stand. Stand in Swedish is stativ. Stativ. Until next time, Roger that. On the street. I walk to beats and say